Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Once again, this is Witch of the Realms, and today we're going to go ahead and do our reading for the full moon on Friday, January 6th. So I hope that you all had a happy holiday season, Christmas, Yule, winter solstice, New Year, and for those in the southern hemisphere, Litha, summer solstice. I hope that you all had a wonderful holiday season and are having a great start to your new year. Now I do know that Mercury went retrograde at the end of December heading into January so there could be some issues going on with that but hopefully it's not hitting you all too hard. I guess starting out as usual I'm going to go ahead and talk about the psychic energies that I'm feeling with this full moon and also just with the beginning of the new year in general. We also have once again the Mercury retrograde will be ending mid-January and the Mars retrograde that we've been dealing with will also end mid-January. Uh, I'll look at the exact specific dates in a minute but I want to talk about the psychic energies that I'm feeling. So I'm really strongly feeling an energy of transformation. That's the key word that keeps vibrating and resonating in my mind. Transformation. And I'm seeing it in a big way. Like I'm seeing like Sailor Moon transforming. I'm seeing like the Winx Club fairy transformations. Okay, I'm seeing like this huge transformation of the self. I feel like with the latest eclipse seasons that we just came out of, this is a continuation of that as well. I know I say this quite often lately, but it feels like the feels like one of those situations where the physical self is once again reaching this point of catching up to all of the internal work and all of the internal change and growth and transformation that we've all been going through. This is a period I feel where the physical catches up to that. So it's a time of awakening, it's a time of recognition, I feel and completion almost in that sense as well through the physical manifestation of the changes we've all undergone. I don't know what it was but when we hit the new year I felt this like switch and this transition take place more so than I really ever have before to be honest um, with the new year. I felt this like switch go off. Maybe that's just something with me personally. I'm turning 33 this year so I feel like that's like a major point of transition in your life as well. So that could just be something with you personally. But I just, I felt this like switch went off at the new year. And it feels like real change. It feels like real transformation and a real transition has undergone with this energy. And I feel like it just really strongly represents transformation and change and the catching up of the physical with all of, you know, the culmination of our lives, all of the growth, all of the change, all of the internal work, the internal struggles, everything that sort of just makes you who you are, how that continues to grow over the years and how it informs who we are in the present, right? We always go through different changes in our lives. Once again, whether that's in the world around us, in our lives, exoterically and internally, we change and we grow over the years. And I feel like there come certain points where we change so much on the internal level that the physical aspect of ourselves needs to catch up to that. And I feel like this is one of those time periods. Okay, that's what I'm feeling psychically with this energy of this full moon and going into the new year. And I will quickly show you here in the Witch's Almanac. This is the full wolf moon. And we have transform yourself on the 7th right after. And I feel like that really resonates with exactly what I'm feeling, this transformational energy, major transformation, big transformation. This feels like an upgrade or a graduation to the next level and a deeper understanding of the self through that aspect. Like I said at the beginning, 
It feels like a point of recognition and awakening to the changes we've undergone. When you bring things to the physical, when you bring things to the persona, the image, the way that we carry ourselves, you know, all of that, it really is a point of recognition as well when you go through this process. And when you bring things and embody them more physically as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at the astrology. This full moon is occurring in Gemini. So there's that energy of Mercury. Um, we are in the Mercury retrograde once again. Let me just tell you guys the dates for that stuff as well real quick. The Mercury retrograde ends on January 19th. And the Mars retrograde ends on January 12th. So this month, you know, once again, heading towards mid-month, towards the end of the month, will be when these retrogrades come to an end. And we also have Uranus retrograde ending on January 22nd. So this month really, you know, it's going to, I feel, especially like I said, towards the middle of the month, towards the end of the month, it's really going to feel like progress. Okay, whatever's been stagnant, whatever's been stalling, whatever's been dormant, we're going to get that progress and that feeling of really a jump forward, I feel. So with the full moon being in Gemini, there's really a sense of movement with this energy, right? Because we have to consider the energies of the wind. Gemini is a mutable sign, so it also an energy of change, adaptation, right? And transformation in that sense. Of course, there's the obvious aspects of communication, transportation. Gemini is a very fast-paced sign. It's a sign of, like I said, movement, steady movement as well. So there could be a lot going on as well with um, contracts, business, relationships, talking, making deals, making bargains, commerce, all of that sort of communicative energy and deal making, signing contracts, renewing leases, things like that could be going on with this energy. And this is the great time for it with this full moon. We also have the sun conjunct Mercury and Sagittarius during this time. So with Sagittarius, we once again get an energy of traveling and expanding and sort of adaptability and trying new things out and figuring out new ways of doing things that are maybe more efficient or just maybe more in line with our truths and who we are and what we want to represent and things like that as well. This is a time of experimentation, going out on a limb, being willing to take risks even, and really try new things and figure out new ways of doing things. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, the planet of expansion, the planet of growth, the planet of higher wisdom and higher learning. So there's also all of that energy included with Sagittarius. This could also mean like trying new techniques in your magic and in your meditation, in any of the practices for your well-being. This could be a time to expand your knowledge or wisdom. Maybe enroll in a class or, you know, do something to expand your knowledge and your wisdom in some way. So you could actively seek that out. Or it could also represent with Mercury conjunct with this, this could also just be new wisdom coming into you. Maybe through some conversation in passing, you gain some wisdom or insight into something. Maybe this is your spirits communicating to you, giving you Gnosis and, you know, psychic information as well. This could just be that you're figuring things out on your own as well with this energy. So there's a lot of different ways that it can manifest. Maybe even reading some new books or something like that could help you during this time or really give you some valuable information. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and now get into the cards. I'm going to be using the Star Spinner Tarot. We'll pull three cards from that, and I'm going to also use the Wood and Bone and Path Unknown Gay Runic Oracle. We'll pull a rune card from that. This is a time of major transitions, major transformation on many levels. 
and even just recognizing how far you've come and the journey your life has taken you on and how that has changed you and transformed you and how powerful that is. Now I align myself with the Most High God and the Holy Spirit, Hecate. Please communicate the truth to me through these cards so that I may be guided for the highest good of all. Please give us your divine guidance for this full moon and the beginning of this new year. Is there anything else that we need to know or do or be aware of at this time for our highest good, greatest success and joy? Please give us your divine guidance. You know, my favorite card out of this deck about to pop up. So we have the King of Coins, my favorite fat little bunny king. Adorable, cute, we love it. The King of Coins. Now this card is all about, you know, remember when I was talking about making deals and bargains and the communication aspect in that sense? That's what we have with the King of Coins or the King of Pentacles, right? It's this energy of business savvy pragmatism. It's a political energy. Making deals. Solving problems. Making sure that everyone's happy. It's also a vibe of figuring things out. What does work? What does make everyone happy? What is the best possible solution for everyone involved? Right, that's what we have with this energy. Now this is coin, so this is also an energy of money and finances benefiting through this energy. This could also be the signing of contracts, once again, renewing leases, things like that. Business, commerce, things to do with, you know, legal matters and contracts as well. And there is a very positive energy with this. So this is to your benefit. This is to everyone's benefit. Things are going to work out in these matters when you approach with this energy. Okay, this is an interesting card to come up because next we have the Eight of Chalices. So we can see with the Eight of Chalices, there's almost this feeling of isolation and solitude. Like we've outgrown something. We've outgrown our shell. We've outgrown a relationship. We've outgrown something. And the Eight of Chalices invites us to walk away from it, to move on, to move past it, and to not even make it about what we're leaving behind, but to make it about what we are pursuing. Like I was talking about at the beginning, we all change, we all grow over the years, through the course of our lives, and our goals change, what we value changes, right? So the Eight of Chalices is saying, Whatever you've outgrown, you need to let it go. You need to walk away from it and walk towards what is calling you right now. Walk towards what you are now in alignment with. And it's okay to do that and it's necessary to do that. We don't need to fear change or try to hold on to the past. Sometimes we even have to let go of something good because it doesn't feel like it's right for us anymore. Sometimes the things that we need to walk away from aren't necessarily even negative things. And I feel like that's where a lot of people get confused or they get in this murky mental energy and emotional attachment energy in not wanting to let go of things that are good or that are comfortable or that we've grown used to or that we've had in our lives for so long, right? But like I said, if you want to honor your truth and the changes that you are going through and, you know, what's calling to you, what's not working for you anymore, you need to be able to honor that. Sometimes you also need to walk away from things that aren't necessarily negative or not necessarily bad things, but it's just not right for you at this time anymore in your life. And it's time to move towards something else that's calling to you. And also just recognizing that you can outgrow something. You can move past something. This woman is looking back at her home, it seems like. And it's this wonderful castle. There's nothing wrong with it. But she seems almost like she's just over it. She's ready for something new. She's ready for a new adventure, something more. 
something else. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that could be what's happening within your soul at this time right now. Your soul's ready for something else, for something new to help you grow more. Okay? So pay attention to that with this energy. And it could be a little bit, like I said, there's emotional attachment. There's murkiness in the mind and confusion over things. Because there could be feelings of sadness of letting something go. But don't let that stop you. Sometimes you just have to let some things go and move forward. This is a gorgeous card. I actually haven't even seen this card in this deck yet. We have the Queen of Swords. Look at her. Stunning. Okay, so with the Queen of Swords, we have the energy of really embracing. It's talking about a little bit of solitude and isolation with the Eight of Chalices. The Queen of Swords is someone that's fully just embracing the independence and the power of self-autonomy. The Queen of Swords is someone that's a little bit battle-hardened. I don't know if you just heard my ceiling paw confirmation and emphasis on the meaning of this card. The Queen of Swords is someone that's a little bit battle-hardened, a little bit weary, and knows a little bit. Been around the block, okay? They know how the world really is. They're not naive at all. That's what the Queen of Swords is. And so because of that, the Queen of Swords isn't someone that's going to wait around for someone else to come along and help her. She's not going to wait around for, you know, the world to change, to make things better and to work out for her. The Queen of Swords knows better than to think like that. The Queen of Swords is not waiting for a white knight or a savior or help, even. The Queen of Swords is someone that's taking the sword in their own hand, taking their own power, taking their own independence, taking their own self-autonomy and sovereignty and making their own path with it. Making the difficult yet powerful choices that determine the course of their own life. That's what the Queen of Swords represent. When the Queen of Swords comes up, there's no more time for games. There's no more time for fairy tale wishes. With the Queen of Swords, you have to get really serious. You have to decide for yourself and make the changes for yourself. And know that you have that power to do so. There's no doubt with the Queen of Swords. You are the Queen of Swords. You have the power to do what you need to do and what you want to do. The sword is in your hand and you're not going to let anyone else distract you or stop you or block your path. Sometimes when we're waiting on something to happen from the universe or from someone else to help or to step out of the way, we're giving them that power over us and over the course of our lives. The Queen of Swords says no more. I'm taking that power back and I'm determining for myself. So that's a perfect follow-up to the Eight of Chalices. The Queen of Swords represents fierce self-love. The Queen of Swords says, I don't need a white knight. I'm going to save myself. And that's an energy that we should all embody this full moon and going in towards this year, this new year. You have the power to make the changes that you want in your life. You have the power to determine for yourself how you're going to move forward. You don't need to rely on others or rely on the universe to make things fall into place for you. Sometimes that's never going to happen in certain situations and you just have to be the one that makes things go your way and you can. Let's go ahead and pull a runic oracle card and see what rune we get to close this reading out. Now I call out to you, Aesir and Veneer, and all you spirits of the runes and of the Norse path. Please come forward now and give us your guidance to these cards. Is there anything else that we need to know or do to be aware of at this time of the full moon and going forward into this new year? Please give us your divine guidance now. Thank you and so much be. We have the rune Lagas. So this is the rune that we have. Lagas is one of the runes of the third eight. 
Alright, these are governed by the warrior god Tyr, who willingly lost his hand while binding the cosmic wolf, Fenrir. These runes deal with sacrifices to better oneself and for the greater good. The third eight reflects social matters, such as interactions with family and other kinfolk, home life, beliefs, and personal growth. This rune is associated with the lake and the fluctuating energies of water. Most villages establish themselves near bodies of water for access to the resources, as well as to create a port for farming and travel. Water sustains all living creatures on the planet. It nourishes, it cleanses, it purifies, it can extinguish fires. Yet water also cannot be fully contained. It can cause destruction. It can carry toxins. As a lake is a landform where the water comes from rain, melted ice, or other water sources, it holds connections to the divine, spiritual, and astral powers. Water is used for various spiritual purposes, from initiation and spiritual cleansing to breaking spells and curses. In tarot, the water element is associated with emotions and matters of the heart. This card reveals a young warrior prostrating himself in shallow water to rejuvenate his energies and give himself to the elements. He is in a meditative trance, requesting the divine element to heal, cleanse, regenerate, and empower his body with loving energy. The key words of this card, nurturing, protection, divine blessing, rejuvenation, cleansing, initiation, empathetic, slash sympathetic, emotional, mystic, a fertility source, dreams, mysteries, and fantasies, hidden and psychic matters. So that's the meaning of this card. So there's this energy of healing, rejuvenation, renewal, rebirth. That was another word that I wanted to say earlier. Transformation and change and rebirth, renewal. I feel like this card also fits really well with the Eight of Chalices and sitting at this body of water. It's a card, I feel, of a recognition once again. Coming back to Source, coming back to Self and recognizing once again with the Queen of Swords that you are the greatest power in your life. Nothing else, no one else, nothing outside of you. You're the greatest power in your life. And it's coming back to that healing and coming back to that source energy and that nurturing and that recognition. And it's surrendering to that truth and surrendering to that power. There is an aspect of surrender to this because we have the Eight of Chalices talking about walking away from something, letting go of something. It almost feels like letting go of naivety, letting go of a worldview where you are not this Queen of Swords, right? and stepping into your power in that sense. So it's letting go of this old way of thinking, letting go of this way of thinking where you're putting your power in other places and giving it to other people and giving it to other situations and taking all of that power back, changing your perspective in that sense. It's a very healing energy. It's an energy of surrendering to your power and understanding these truths. And it's an energy of recognition and acceptance acknowledging and awakening. This full moon and this new year is really calling us to step into our power. It's calling us to recognize the changes and the growth that we've undergone in all of the years of our lives leading up to now and to recognize and fully accept this new being that we have become. This is a rebirth into that understanding that you are the greatest force and source of power in your life. And so we're being called to step into this energy going forward into this year, letting go of old ways of doing things, letting go of the past and old ways of thinking, especially in areas where we've been putting our power in someone else's hands, taking it back for ourselves, exploring our own power and acknowledging what we're capable of and then using it going forward into this year. So with that said, that's going to be all for this reading. I hope that it really helped you and inspires you and gets you motivated to go forward into this year with a sense of power and purpose for yourself and for your life and those you love. If you would like to get in touch with me for a private reading, you can contact me through the methods below in the description box. If you'd like to join my Patreon and have access to all of my 
videos and lessons on advanced witchcraft and secret magics I've learned from Goddess Hecate over the years. The link for that is in the description box down below as well. I would like to thank my current patrons. And I hope you all have a happy and magical new year. As always, until next time, hell Hecate, hell to the witches, hell to the fairy, and the runes, and blessed be.